Hi everyone, welcome to Fintech Academy. This is Hirsch. Today I will show you how to use the closing date feature of QuickBooks Online. All right, so let's get started with that. All right, so closing date in QuickBooks Online. When you are ready to close out the year, close your books to prevent unwanted changes before filing your taxes. This locks your books so no one can edit your accounting data before the closing date. This is an important step when you review the previous year's financial data. Closing your books ensures everything stays the way you want it to be. It also prevents any accidental changes that could affect your financial reports. This should be the last step of your year-end review, or you can pr also perform this step at any time during the year, once you have completed an important task in QuickBooks. So, i.e. it could be, let's say, you have done your reconciliation and you would like to uh, lock that so that no one will go and make any changes to those transactions because that could mess up your reconciliation. Of course, you certainly can do a locking at that time. You can just put the date that, you know, prior to this date, if, if, if you want to make a change, then you'll need a special uh, password for that apart from your login password. And I'll show you momentarily how that can be done live in QuickBooks Online. Or let's say, you know, you have completed your sales tax filing, whichever way it is, it's monthly, it's quarterly, and you want to lock those books so that, you know, no one can go and make changes to any of the sales tax or even otherwise any transactions. And if they do want to, then they should know the password only then they can go ahead and make the change uh, to, the, uh, to the accounts or to the numbers. Uh, at times, closing date is understood as a date to record closing journal entries at the end of fiscal period. So many times, you know, there is confusion that, okay, I should put there um, only the date like 31st December because, you know, then I should be entering or recording the journal entries for closing the books. That is not this. This is just for the security purpose so that, you know, it locks your books where no one can edit your accounting data before the closing date. That's the whole purpose of this. There is no journal entries to be entered for closing temporary accounts. Temporary accounts are closed automatically by QuickBooks Online at the 12 month end, uh, period end and permanent accounts balances are carried forward. So temporary accounts are the revenue accounts or the expenses accounts, right, which are closed automatically by QuickBooks. Permanent accounts, uh, which is assets, liabilities, and the equity account, those are automatically carried forward at the end of the 12-month period. All right, let's see in action in QuickBooks Online this closing date feature so we'll have a better understanding. Right, so we are in QuickBooks Online over here and to go to the feature which is close the books, we'll click on the gear icon which is on the top right over here and within that there is your company. In your company, we will be clicking on the first option which is accounts and settings like this over here and as soon as I do that, I will be shown on the left icon bar the last option which is advanced. So I'm going to go ahead and click on advanced over here like this. As soon as I do that, in, the, in this section of accounting over here, if we go and look, there is close the box and it is currently off. So I can click on this um, directly off thing and it's going to open up or I can click on the top right hand corner where there is uh, the pencil kind of thing and that's also going to do the same thing. All right, so close the box and there's a small little question mark as an assistance for us given by QuickBooks Online. I'm going to click on that. It tells prevents any changes to transactions dated earlier than the closing date. So basically it will help us lock those um, transactions prior to that date. I'm going to turn it on like this and as soon as I do that QuickBooks is going to ask me please enter the closing date. So let's say you know I just completed for example my filing of the HST uh, for 30th of June put it that way and I want to uh, lock those uh, transactions so that you know no one by mistake can go ahead and make any changes and if, if they do want to then there are two options over here so the QuickBooks gives allow changes after viewing a 
warning so a small little warning will pop up and you know uh, that that's a kind of indication that hey um, the, 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 you, you're going past the closing date uh, are you okay with that uh, message will come but uh, the second option which enforces which is allow changes after viewing a warning and entering the password now uh, if you are in a multi-user mean to say if there is more than one uh, person using your QuickBooks uh, data and sharing then I would recommend going for the second option because you know uh, that way even by mistake if someone has the, the warning might appear but if they want to go past that they certainly can go and uh, it, it, there is a big chance or a bigger chance that there could be uh, you know a bypass that could be happening if, if you enforce then yes the password is needed unless they have the password which you know QuickBooks is going to ask us if when we select that that give a password which should be something different than what you are using in the regular of course you don't want to forget that so make sure that whatever you put it um, you know it is kind of uh, which you can remember but let's do first just the warning okay so when i do the warning that there you go there is no password but let's say i'm going to click on save over here now the save has been done and quickbooks shows over here close the box we have put in the date 30th of june 2021 and let's say i'm going to click on the done on the bottom right hand corner so that feature is now activated we should we have the closing date as on 30th of june 2021 all right, so we did put that to closing date. Now let's have a look. Um, we'll try to make some changes. I'm going to go to reports and let me go to profit and loss. Um, and I'm going to pick up, let's say, uh, in the period, I'm going to say I want to see something for last uh, fiscal quarter. So last quarter, that's what I'm going to pick up over here and click on run report. All right, so we do have some transactions from April to June. Remember, our cutoff date is 30th of June. I'm going to click on this sale of product income. There are some numbers in there. And uh, this first transaction I have is for April. So I'm going to click that and let's see what What's going to happen when i make a change to this uh, transaction balance due is zero but you know what uh, someone thought that okay well the quantity is entered incorrectly this should be four numbers okay well there you go the four numbers has been done and of course we do have a difference but uh, generally when you are you know when you see the invoice value you're always happy that i did a good sale i'm gonna go and save it right away well there is a pop-up that comes up that the transaction you are editing is linked to others are you sure you want to modify it that's a regular pop-up because there's a payment that is linked to quickbooks online so that's why it's giving uh, uh, that message right uh, to, with this invoice but i'm okay with that i'm gonna say yes to that there you go that's the pop-up which says double check the transaction date this transaction was on or before your company's closing date editing the transaction will affect your box are you sure you want to save now i do have the option to say no of course and go out come out and you know uh, uh, if i'm the only user probably i'll remember that yes i put in the close the date and yep that's right i should not be doing that and i'll think on an alternate way what should be done but let's say if i say yes um, over here what's going to happen is there you go my transaction is now updated so if i go back over here in it's going to show me that now the value has changed the quantity has changed everything has been updated this is what is your first feature which we just mentioned that give a warning and you know go ahead with uh, thereafter whatever the user decides uh, we'll look at the second option because you know uh, this you know you might think that okay well this is good but someone can make a mistake or just say yes to that uh, you know not thinking about the overall implications of the transaction on the books so this may not be very effective all right let's have a look at the second option when we enforce and we ask for the password all right so i'm going to go back to uh, the gear icon i'm going to go to account and settings over here on the left i'll go back to advance the same thing i'll click on the close the box the date is good i'm not going to touch the date but i'm going to change this to that uh, you know entering the password now i need to provide the password over here so i'm going to type a password uh, you know which which as i mentioned before the one that you don't want to forget be okay i'm going to click on save over here and 
click on done. So now basically what I've done is that um, we are enforcing, let's open the same invoice again, okay? And now we want to say that, okay, well, why not make it five instead of four, right? Let's increase some more sales. All right, there you go. So now we are making a bigger change. Of course, the amounts are mounting, save and close. Again, the same pop-up that yes, there is a transaction that is linked uh, because we have received the payment against invoice. I'm gonna say yes to that. Now it's gonna tell you that, hey, you know what? Double check the date, but it's, um, if I'm gonna try to enter my regular passwords or any of those which I've been entering, let's say this is my regular password, and if I say yes to that, that doesn't match, so it's not gonna go through. Because now you're enforcing, uh, you know, it, it's unless the user enters the password, they won't be able to so is aware of the password. Of course, they know what they're doing, right? And only then they, they will be able to proceed. But if the user doesn't know the password, then they probably are going to go to, um, you know, the, the uh, authorized uh, person, whoever it is, to ask. Each time they try to do save and close, they will be taken to that screen that you must provide the password. For some reason, I do know the password. I put that in. I say yes to that. Um, automatically it is saved so if I open it again now like this you're gonna see that hey the quantity has changed to five but what I was trying to explain that yes you need a password once you have enforced the user right and that's why closing date is very important. Don't confuse that closing that, hey, you know what? It is uh, at the end of the year or at the end of the 12 month, we need to enter transactions or journal entries to do the whole process of doing the closing that is not needed in quickbooks online that is done automatically all the temporary accounts are turned to zero the permanent accounts are carried forward but this is more of kind of a security feature so that you know you can put it at any any period once you complete a valuable task uh, in fact you know when i i do the training and i do consulting i always recommend uh, my clients also that once you've done your reconciliations you must go ahead and date that date it does not do it automatically many times you know there's a confusion that okay you know as soon as I, I have done the reconciliation is quick quickbooks going to flip this over the date for me the answer to that is no you will have to come over here you'll have to change the, the closing date like this and you will have to put the period let's say I complete my rack for the month of July put it over July rest you can leave it the way in which it is now it's going to turn to 31st July and click on done that's how you complete that so if I go back and have a look in account and settings and on the left I go to advance you will be able to see the date has been updated so that's what is the feature of the part which is close the books all right guys so if you found this video helpful please like our video and subscribe to our channel for more videos also let me know in comments what would you like to see in future videos i.e hirsch i want to see this video or hirsch can you make video on this topic for accounting and bookkeeping quickbooks desktop quickbooks online excel canadian income tax t1 canadian income tax t2 or canadian payroll alternatively you can also visit us at fintechsolutions.ca for our courses thanks for watching